Hello, everybody, and welcome to Inside D2 Football in our Week 1 Preview. With Chris Ferguson, Tony Nicolette, Justin Polizzi, Matt Witwicky, and Chuck Bidner, I am Brandon Meisner. Again, thank you for being here with us tonight. We're going to have a fun show. It's going to be a little different than we're used to. We have no games to talk about being played. Uh, so we are going to do some things that we've never done before. Last week, we revealed the top 25. This week, we're going to predict what our selections are for the conference champ for every conference in Division II. Uh, we will also look at the week one games and get our season pick them started. And uh, at the end of the show or near the end of the show, we will each rank in order what we think the top five conferences are in Division II and how we came to those conclusions. And that should be a lively discussion. So uh, it should be a really fun time tonight. Uh, so, again, tonight we're going to start, though, with uh, the conference predictions. Uh, when I'm going to share a screen here in just a second. And when you see that, it's going to have all my predictions for all the conferences. Uh, I did that so that I wouldn't have to try to talk and type at the same time. I have enough time talking or hard enough time talking that typing and talking wasn't going to happen. So you'll know my predictions, but the other guys will give theirs as we go along. So let's go ahead and add that screen. And let's take them in order, guys. Uh, first conference is going to be the CIAA. And I picked Virginia Union as my champion. I thought that they had enough coming back. Um, I thought that they have the best player in the conference. And there's no Chuan to <laughs> upset them this year. So I picked them to win uh, the CIAA. What were your thoughts, Chuck? Uh, I second you, Virginia Union. Okay, okay Ferg. Do I have to put it out there? Or should I wait for yes, the column? Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> well, I, I, I have to agree with you. I think Virginia Union's probably got the, the leg up from what I've seen. Okay. What about you, Tony? Yeah, I'm with you, Virginia Union. All right. Oh, man, hopefully somebody else picks somebody, another team, and we're going to give them the kiss of death, uh, right? Don't, don't bet on it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Justin, what were your thoughts? Um, I'm with you guys. I think Virginia Union. What? How about well, you? Well, I do have some surprises upcoming. This one, to me, the biggest surprise was how the, the coaches in the conference kind of did them dirty and didn't say they haven't won the conference. So I really think that this is going to be a little bit of a battle cry for them going forward about disrespect. I got a Virginia Union. <laughs> Well, I'd like to apologize to the Panthers right now. <laughs> the Broncos are going to win now. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on to the GAC. Uh, I picked Harding. Uh, I think uh, they're headed in the right direction. They are the program in the GAC, and they have a lot of guys coming back, and I think they're going to be a formidable opponent this year. Chuck, what are your thoughts? I agree, Brandon. I, I have Harding as well. Um, you know, the GAC has been a pretty deep race the last couple of years, but I think you're still looking at the top three teams, Wachita, Harding, and, and I think Henderson State's going to be in the mix this year as well. But with the defense that Harding has and that tough running game, uh, I have the Bisons. Okay. Chris, what about you? I'm going to go with Wachita here. Okay. Whew. All right. Tony. I think I'm going to stick with Harding on this one, Brandon. Um, just feeling like the the physicality that they bring, uh, as just in their style of play, is going to. I think you know they've had to bring some guys along, and, and I think they're going to be at that point of taking the next step this year. Um, yeah, I, to me, when I, I mean, I know East Central had a good season last year. Henderson had a good season. Of course, Washita ran the table. Even South, even Southeast had a good season. It's something tells me Harding is going to be back at the front of things at the end of the year. Okay, very good. Uh, Justin, what are your thoughts? What's your opinion? I'll, I'm going to stay with uh, with Harding as well. I, I think they're uh, in prime position to to uh, win the conference again here in 2023. And uh, Wit, you know what I like? Henderson State coming on this year. Wouldn't be surprised if they were the runner up in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, I'm a little bit concerned about Wachita and TJ Cole being gone. Love Harding. You guys already heard me last week talking about them. 
Uh, I have him in the top 10 in my in my top 25. Certainly have him here. So what are your thoughts on is that bad loss that Washita suffered at the in the first round of the playoffs? Is that lingering in all of our brains? Is that why we all have these thoughts, you think? I think there's something to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but it's uh, different. It's different when you're going against like Northwest and and versus the, the rest of the GAC. Like that's just two different levels. And and Wachita has, you know, been very, very consistent playing at that high level um in the GAC. So I think you kind of have to ignore that playoff piece because it's just different in conference way. Well, to Harding's defense, they've 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 played with Northwest. I mean, they, yeah. you know, they Northwest has has, has has gotten them, but they've also had where it came down to the last play of the game and another game where Northwest looked like they were going to have a hard time with them, and Northwest kind of took off late in the game. So I, I, th- I think Harding has shown much better on the national stage. Okay. Right. Okay, uh, let's did, move did, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But, okay, but okay. did Harley, but did Harding make the playoffs last year? If we're going to use that that law that you're bringing out there. Ferg, this sounds like a side bet with you and I for, <laughs> for a Dairy Queen. You have Wachita, I have Harding, and when we next see each other, you will owe me a Dairy Queen. I hear you. I need really to work on them as a sponsor, Brandon. He's not talking to many. He's going large on that one. All right. No. Uh, <laughs> the, the GLIAC. Um, honestly, for me, this, this was a very close – decision um at the end what flipped my decision and i'm not a personnel guy i think the college football coaches are experts at replacing players they do it all the time so it's not like uh the nfl where if you lose some star it's a big deal uh having said that uh i believe that grand valley lost just a couple of guys that they could have retained there's a coaching change there and ferris state we found out that they were had a couple guys who were granted an extra year late in the process. And I think that's going to be too much. And I think they will repeat as uh, champs in the GLIAC. Uh, Chuck. You know, I think it's kind of easy to, to forget or overlook that grand Valley actually is the defending champion in the GLIAC. Correct. Yes. Obviously, you know, Ferris won the big prize. So we re- we remember that that obviously carries more weight, but uh, I think grand Valley actually can repeat. Um, let's be honest. You know, I, I think Saginaw is a very good football team. Uh, I think Davenport's a very good football team, but this league in all likelihood comes down to the matchup on October 14th. And that meeting is in Lubber Stadium at Grand Valley. So I, I carry that a little bit of weight with that as well. I'm going with the Lakers to repeat. Very good. All right, Chris, what are your thoughts? Man, this is really tough because we're really only talking about two teams. I mean, no disrespect to the to the rest of the league, which is a very good league, by the way. We'll talk about that later. But <laughs> this this is very hard because Grand Valley has so much coming back too. I mean, and especially in key positions. But man, Ferris just finds a way to have so much depth and and sustainability year after year. And and it, where's the game this year? Is it at, isn't it at Ferris? No, it's no, an Allendale. Allen, Allen, Allen. I'll, yeah, I'll take Grand Valley then. I'll take Grand Valley. All right. Very good. All right. Tony, I'm sure this is this one's exciting. You go ahead. Uh, <laughs> hey, I I have been to I don't think I've missed a game between these two schools in I, I couldn't tell you the last time. And other than the playoff game a couple of years ago um that was pretty one-sided these games are all you know typically a couple of point deals um so i I mean realistically it's it's yeah i mean how do you how do you pick it i I just i i think i have to i think i'm with brandon on the fact that the least amount of unknown variables reside uh in, in at ferris they're just there are changes and, and things that had to be addressed in Grand Valley that Ferris hasn't had to deal with this year. And until we know, you know, how those changes impact things. Well, I mean, honestly, Tony, I think, you know, the loss of for, uh, for Kareen and, and, and the receiver, that's that's a big deal. You know, those are two potential impact players. And then uh, they got Oladipo back, did Ferris right at the end of the summer. Those are things that kind of flip those. 
No, uh, the, they did. And but I mean, look, you, you can't underestimate. I mean, Ferris did lose their best player. I mean, let's 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 not overlook that. I mean, Caleb Murphy was. You know, that's very true too. That it's hard to overcome that. I I just I again I, and I and I I know that the players that Grand Valley lost were important, but you know Ferris lost one of their best guys to the portal as well. I I don't know. I, I just yeah. to me they're just. There are just fewer variables with Ferris at this point, and I and I mean, and I could talk myself all the way back around to the other right. side of yeah. it, which is you know, let's say it's at Grand Valley, they got right. you know everybody back, uh, mostly on the offensive line, most of the defense is back. I mean, it's, I mean, flip a coin. Yeah, well, the, hey, that's what makes that fun. I mean, we need we need more things like that in in the deuce. Uh, Justin, what are your thoughts? So, you both bring up really really good points, and when you look at it. Yeah, Ferris State brings brings people back, but I think home field advantage can carry a lot of weight. And so with it being at Grand Valley, it, I think you said it, Brandon, flip a coin, and, and, and that's really who's going to win this thing. I, I think it's going to come down to that game. But, uh, you know, everybody talks about being a head coaching change can sometimes be difficult. I think a head coaching change might might just, you know, spark some of the juices and, and change some stuff up. And so I'm going to take Grand Valley at home to win that okay. game and win the conference. Both the road teams won last year. Just exactly, I was saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wit, what are true. your thoughts? When I take a look at the fact that they've uh, Ferris adds in a, a defensive back who's on our elite one hundred team, a D yes. tackle who's on our elite one hundred team, and they bring back as much as they are. We didn't think they were, and then they really are. Uh, I think this is a better roster this year for Ferris. Uh, I'm going to take Ferris to to win it, and I I think maybe they uh, they they're they're clear cut in my opinion. No, oh, very good. All right, moving on to the GLVC. Uh, I picked Indianapolis. Uh, with all due respect to the other teams, I thought they're the best program, and I did. I thought the addition of John Lewis will allow them to play football in a style that they're very comfortable with, and I thought that was a big addition, and I think that will give them the edge over Truman State. Well, to a, a lesser extent, it's the same conversation that we just had with Grand Valley and Ferris. Mm-hmm. It's a t- it's a two team league, and no disrespect to all the competitors in that league, uh, it comes down to Indianapolis and Truman State for me. Um, both teams bring a lot back, a lot. Uh, yes. I was very very tempted to go with Truman State. They have almost their whole offense back. Uh, they have an experienced quarterback who's heading into his fourth year as a starter. Most of the defense is back. I was really tempted to take Truman, but I'm going to go with you, Indy. I think that the depth that they have added at a few key positions puts them over the top for me. All right. Chris? Everything Chuck said, except that I'm going with Truman. All right, Tony? I agree with everything that Chuck said. I agree with everything that Chris said. I Until, until Truman does it, I, 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 I got to see it first. Okay. And Coach Poe, what's up? Four year starter at quarterback, taking Truman State. Okay. And Witt. Uh, I like, the, I, I'm impressed by the fact that we have this many people going with Truman. Uh, I do as well. And I think for the same reasons everybody else is mentioning, they bring back quite a bit. Um, defense is the same as most of it a lot from a year ago, also. They just missed the playoffs last season, and I think that they're hungry. I think they make the playoffs this year. Truman State? Very good. All right. Uh, The GMAC. This is one of two conferences I had the most trouble with. Uh, I went with Tiffin. I'm not absolutely confident about it. I just thought that they had the most. That was the same, that there were the fewest amount of changes. Um, It's the last one I would bet on the winner. So I'm, I, this is the one I'm not very comfortable with. Chuck, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, with good reason, you're not very comfortable. I, I could make a case for four teams in this. Right. League. And just for some context there, you know, the, the great Midwest has had five different champions in the last six years. Hmm. So, you know, we're not going to get a national champion out of this league, but it's a very competitive league within itself. Um, I'm actually going with Finley in the great okay. Midwest. Um, I think that they had a pretty good year last year following up on their conference championship the year before. Uh, What I really like is the way the schedule sets up for them. Um, They have a really tough opener against Truman State. I think Truman probably gets that one. 
but then they really don't face anyone else. That's probably going to be a winning team. Maybe Hillsdale has a good year. Uh, we'll see, but they don't play Ohio Dominican Ashland and Tiffin until the last three weeks of the season. So if they have some depth, if they can stay relatively healthy, peak at the right time. Uh, I like the Oilers. All right. Uh, what about you, Chris? Ohio Dominican. All right, Tony. Man, part of me wants to do Ashland just so that I can be unique to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> After the way we talked about them last week, though. Well, that, well that's what I was going to follow it up with. I was kind of leading the charge with, boy, they got a lot of question marks. They're probably overranked, you know, that whole thing. <laughs> No, no matter um, what we're picking up, we're all picking former GLIAC teams. Yeah. How do you argue that? Um, I, I, you know, I, I am actually going to go Tiffin in this one. I just think they're due. Okay. Which is the antithesis of what I said above until I see Truman beat <laughs> Indianapolis. But, you know, whatever. That's what makes this fun, right? I'll just contradict myself all damn night. Uh, what about you, Justin? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take Finley. Okay. Wit. Oh man. Remember when Ashland hated on me last year and now oh, yeah. not one of us are going to pick Ashland here. They're going to hate on all of us. Okay. Just you. And they could the, not hate. They could not hate us any more than we already hate ourselves. So. Well, and, and Brandon and Tony, I'm unhappy with you two specifically because I thought I sniffed something out here with Tiffin, and no one else was going to touch this. 35 points a game, a solid defense last year. Uh, they're bringing back, you know, a really nice wide out, you know, and playmaker. I'm taking Tiffin, and I'm unhappy with some of the rest of you who did too. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, my thought process on the Gulf South. Chose, obviously, Delta State, as you see right there. I thought – they had the most coming back. I, there's little transition there, and they performed well last year. I just, to me, there's some good programs there. And, and for a second, I thought about some of the others, but to me, it's Delta State. Chuck. Same, Brandon. I'm going Delta State. Um, it certainly won't surprise me if it's West Florida. The talent level there is extremely high. I think West right. Georgia is really angry after, you know, having a really good season a year ago. But, yeah, and having the experienced quarterback, uh, coaching staff, and the, the size of their offensive line, uh, I'm going Delta State. Okay. Ferg. Yeah, this is a really tough one because, again, we're down to two teams like we have been in prior conferences. And, and – uh I think with West Florida, you're you're certainly asking a lot out of a first year coach, despite the talent level. Um, and so, you know, Delta State is the trendy pick, but I, I kind of do like Delta here. Okay, Tony. Yeah, it's it starts and ends with Patrick Shegog for me, guys. Uh, uh, when the best quarterback in the league's on your team, you got an advantage. Yep. Yep. Justin. So I, I, th I think this is not as clear cut as maybe I thought it was when we started. And, and what I mean by that is I think, I think West Georgia is angry uh, about missing out in the playoffs last year. I think West Florida has a ton of talent. Ultimately, I think the team that's going to win it is Delta state, but I don't think it's as clear cut as we think it is. And, and there's a sleeper to me and it's, and it's West Alabama. Um, I think they're going to be a tough out for a lot of teams this year, but I, I I'm going with Delta state to repeat. Okay. It. Well, well, well. <laughs> so you guys have cleared the runway for me. You know, I was kind of in between on this one because I have concerns about Delta State lo losing some of their top offensive players, um, losing some of their top defenders to best linemen in the league. And I have some concerns about West Florida as well, just the uncertainty of a new coach and, and everything that goes along with that. But now that I see this, West Florida, may, this that's for sure for me now because now I know if I get this one right, all the rest of you don't. So I like that. All right, very good. It's, it's good logic. Pick. Good it's logic. a safe pick, yeah. Well, it was a coin flip, so there you go. All right. In the Lone Star, I picked Angelo State. Uh, the reason I did is I, I'm not confident in Angelo State this year. I think they're 
way too many questions, at least questions to me. Maybe there are, maybe those questions don't exist within the program. Uh, they do to me, but I thought the gulf was too much to overcome. It's, there was too big of a gap between Angelo and a team like West Texas, you know, having a great first year uh, under Josh Lynn, um, something to that effect, Kingsville taking the next step. So I went with Angelo State. So I think the Lone Star could either be really, really wide open this year or Angelo is just going to run the table again. I really don't know which way it's going to go. Um, I'm going with Angelo State as well, simply because they're a known quantity. Uh, over the last couple of years. And yes, they did lose a lot in the portal, but their system's been really good. Their defense is outstanding. And I really don't know what to make of the rest of the the Lone Star. I, you know, I think Central Washington's a, a great program. You know, it's it's difficult to, to compete in that league uh, long-term. So we'll see heading into a second year with them. And after that, I, I really don't even know who a third place, fourth place team is in that league. Um, so I'm going to go with the known entity and, and pick Angelo State. Okay. And let's go with Chris. The Lone Star is really, really difficult too for, I mean, because you know, you, you have Kingsville that's out there, um, but I, I'm a little concerned about, well, how much offense do they truly have? West Texas is, seems to be kind of young. Uh, Midwestern has question marks on offense. Um, Premier Basin? I mean, maybe yeah. they can make some noise. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in cases like this, I think you go with the known quantity. And I think you start off with Angelo. Okay. Uh, Tony. In cases like this, you go with the known quantity. Unless you're trying to mess with wit. <laughs> At which point you pick Texas Permian Basin. All right. Very good. Justin. Ooh. Well, mm. <laughs> <sighs> let's go to West Texas. All right. Nice. That's fun. All right. Wit. You're a great Brandon, man. Uh, all my speaking points you pretty much took on this one. Um, I have the same concerns that you do that Angelo's probably not the team they were a year ago, but I don't see a next team ready to unseed them. Um, you know, I, I, I think if, if we were looking at central Washington, I think they have a lot of good things in place. I'm just not sure if they're, you know, going to be good enough uh, in the passing game. Uh, I think they will be able to run the ball and they'll play defense. Um, otherwise I, I'm having a hard time really believing that somebody's going to beat Angelo. Uh, Kingsville is probably going to be the best chance to be consistent, but I got to go Angelo here. Okay. In the MIAA, I went with Pittsburgh State. Uh, for you know, to me, there's a lot of echo of what was going on in the GLIAC. Um, I believe uh, Pitt Northwest would have been the other team I picked between. Uh, I think Pitt State did enough uh, to maintain that small edge, and uh, I like where their program's heading. So I picked the Gorillas to win the MIAA. Well, Brandon, this screenshot's going to be on the Northwest Missouri hype video uh, a few weeks from now. <laughs> Has been uh, call, call, calling you out, calling you out, and uh, and when that hype video drops, then they can drop the soundbite of me saying I like Northwest Missouri to win the MIAA. Okay, Chris, you know I, I'm kind of looking at this dark horse in uh, Central Oklahoma, but I, I, I'm just a little too afraid to pick them right now, <laughs> so. Um, I'm going to go with Northwest as well. I think they do have a lot of pieces to, to make a run. Tony. So I'm with Chris, I'm with Chris in that, uh, central Oklahoma is extremely interesting. I, I, I mean, is Emporia state going to drop that far off? Or are they going to take a step forward? I, I don't know. Uh, to me, if Hohenstein plays the whole year and plays like he did at the in the spots that he did at the end of the year, I don't see anybody beating Northwest. Okay, Justin. First, I'm going to go with Northwest. Second, that is Brandon Meisner at d2football.com. <laughs> Brandon Dot Meisner. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> After they get done creating the video about how you're not in the foxhole with them and everything else. Well, but, uh, good, good news for me. 
the young man who creates those videos transferred to Kansas State and is doing the same thing for them. So maybe maybe they He's will not be on their the videos. What's that? He's got you in their videos too. <laughs> That's how influential I am. Yes. I'm about to say, what did you say about somebody in that conference? Anyway, <laughs> um, so guys, uh, Pitt State's the answer here. What, I mean, what are we doing? Um, Pitt, Pitt State is got too much defense. Uh, I, I'm a little concerned with Northwest up front defensively. I'm not sure that they are convincing me they still they have enough firepower offensively to be better than Pitt. I, I like Pitt here. And you know who, you know, somebody mentioned Emporia. Don't be shocked if they somehow won this conference this year. I think you should be shocked. All right. MEC. I went with uh, Concord. Uh, honestly, this comes back to Mangle coming back. That we had no clue about. I had that was completely surprised a week ago to find out. That's why I selected them. Uh, Chuck. Uh, well, I've known about that for a long time. I guess you don't talk to me often enough, Brandon. But, um, <laughs> but uh, Mangle's top target, Jared Bowie, is not there. Uh, so that's definitely a factor. And they, they have head coaching changes there as well. I think Concord's a great pick, but uh, I'm going to stick with Notre Dame. They've won this league five years in a row. Uh, they are the team to beat. Now, they, they lost their uh, starting quarterback, Chris Brim. He finally graduated, so there's a change there. But they that was a big really deal to me. Look in defense. I, fair enough. Fair enough. That's a very big deal. Uh, but I'm sticking with the Falcons. Okay. Ferg. Concord, because I'm riding with them uh, on my fantasy team this year. All right. Tony. Yeah, we were talking about these guys, I think, uh, a little bit before the show. Uh, I'm taking Frostburg State. Uh, I think uh, they've been kind of plotting their way along here, and in their first season of eligibility, they want to make a splash and try and make it to the dance. So they're going all in. They've been a great addition to Division Two in these early stages. That really happy to have them, Justin. Well, Tony took my thunder because that's who I was going to pick. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think I think Tony, you kind of hit the. We nail could on be the right head. together. No, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, though. I think they, you know, that when they when they transitioned uh, their first year at D two, they would have won the league if they if they were eligible, and uh, I, I think they're. They've got themselves in a great position, and I think they're going to make a run at it. And I think they're going to be competitive in in the league for for quite a few years. I mean, I, they're not going anywhere. All right. Whip, what are your thoughts? Well, I haven't heard all that from Justin. I'm instantly reevaluating my Frostburg selection. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, um, I, I I agree with the guys. I I think the timing is right uh, for for them to take that next step. So I got them here. Okay. Uh, the Northeast 10, I picked Assumption. It was a difficult decision. It was between uh, Assumption and New Haven. Um, literally is a flip of a coin for me. Not literally, but uh, it was, it was tr truly felt like a flip of a coin. I went with Assumption uh, returning champs. Yeah, it, it's close between Assumption and New Haven. The coaches poll went with New Haven, but it's it's very close. Uh, but I'm with you, Brandon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Assumption. Okay. Ferg. New Haven. Okay. And Tony. Well, given their the Gleak tie here, I'm gonna have to go with the the fighting Brian Kelly's and take assumption. Okay. Uh, Justin. Wit, who are you picking? So make sure I get this one right. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take New Haven. Yeah. All right. What do you think, Wit? Yeah, there we go. Um you know, Assumption's defense, top five nationally a year ago. Um, I, they, you know, they bring back a, a dual threat quarterback who I think is going to be the guy. And um, I, I like Assumption here. They did. They had, uh, you know, he was their leading passer and rusher. You know, he's back. At, and the the only thing that the only thing that was I was hesitant about is they won so many close games. Mm -hmm. You wonder if that can be duplicated. So. That, that, that was one of the things that uh, I thought was a potential red flag. Um, the Northern Sun was a little tougher than I thought. In fact, I started out with Mankato, Minnesota State, and uh, then convinced myself that Bemidji had enough coming back that they were going to win the conference. Plus, I was also heavily influenced by 
the broadcast of NSIC Weekly with ah, Tom ah, Frederick ah. and Matt Witwicky. So I went with Bemidji State. Oh, smooth. Yeah, I, uh, I I prefer the uh, the the audio version of that show. The, uh, oh. the video didn't do much for me. But, um, Just because everybody's I, getting a chance to see what Tom looks like. <laughs> I've uh, I went on a little bit of a circuitous journey there too, Brandon. I started started with Bemidji, then leading towards Mankato, but uh, I'm back on board with Bemidji State. I, I we know what their offense looks like. Brandon Alt's back. I really like how far they've come on defense in the last couple of years. Uh, have a nice, a nice addition at running back as well. So I'm going with the Beavers. Okay. What are you thinking, Chris? I mean, as Whit would say, that'll be enough. And that'll be enough for the Bemidji State love. I'm going to go with Matt Cato here. All right. All right, Tony. Not enough love for me yet, Chris. I got to go back and jump on the bandwagon with the guys and go Bemidji. Unacceptable. Right. <laughs> Poe, what are you thinking? Bemidji. Go Beavs. All right. And Wit. Well, this will be on a bulletin board tomorrow morning. Um, by the way, Brandon, you're spelling Bemidji differently this week, I've noticed. Yeah, hey, the file was spelled correctly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> screenshot say, hey, at least you got the file name correct. You know, <laughs> thank God Bemidji wasn't on the opening last week, but anyway, um, <laughs> I will take uh Bemidji as well. Um, I, I just like everything that they're returning. Um, and Cato's got a few question marks as to you know making sure they get everything filled in defensively. Um, but I wouldn't be shocked if Minnesota State were to forge their way ahead, they've done it so many times, yep. exactly. All right, in the PSAC. I picked uh, the reigning PASAC champion, IUP. I think, honestly, I think Karst Hunter is going to make IUP uh, the most interesting that they've been in a very long time because of his unique skill set. It's something different for them. And I think it's going to be fun to watch and, and, and kind of see how that plays out. So anyway, I was most excited about them and I picked IUP. Yeah, you know, Brandon, the uh, the known quantity at quarterback typically carries a lot of weight with me. And Slippery Rock has everything but a known quantity at quarterback. Right. Uh, but I am going with The Rock. I think they have a just a tremendous system in place. They bring back almost everything except a starting quarterback. Uh, and I'm going with Slippery Rock to win the PSA. Okay. All right, Chris. To me, this is like three teams, and neither of those teams are Shepard, which is like really interesting to show like how right. big Tyson Bajant like matters there. Um, to, to me, the three teams is IUP, Slippy Rock, and Cutstown. And I think mm -hmm. Cutstown always gets forgotten. They in, do. In, in this thought. But because because know, they're not they're not fancy. They just play solid football. That's why they it always happens. Right. You know. Right, right, right. So I, I just wanted to show them a little love because I don't think I'd be surprised if anybody picks them, but they're there. Um, but to me, I think that um, the staff at Slippery Rock always finds a way to get a good quarterback to run their system. I don't know how they do it. They do. Uh, but they do. And uh, and I like them over IUP, so give me the rock. And, and okay. I'll, I'll throw you a little extra love there, Ferg, because if it comes down to Slippery Rock and Kutztown, because they are in different divisions and they have a conference championship game, Kutztown has had a lot of success against Slippery Rock. Yeah. Okay. Uh Tony. Excellent segue, Chuck. My goodness. Uh, see, to me, to me, Kutztown lost a couple of games last year that they shouldn't have. It, I just, I, I think they're going to write that this year. So uh, give me the, give me, give me a Kutztown. All right, Justin. So a couple of things I've learned on this show, particularly, is Chuck. Nobody knows the Peace Act better than Chuck. That's however, for sure. However, every time. I pick against IUP, I lose. So I'm going to take IUP. Oh, curses. <laughs> Wit, your thoughts. <laughs> Foiled again. Uh, <laughs> well, you covered all, we covered all the bases before we got to you. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, I, I actually I like, the, I like the words being talked about with Kutztown. I, I think that's, you know, I, I think they're going to be a hard nosed team and they're going to be a handful this year. I don't think there is a clear number one. Um, in the Peace Act this year, um, and like the others, 
I just have a hard time. Shepard's re- having to replace so many guys uh, offensively, especially that I'm really concerned. Um, I-, I like what IUP is going. I like Carson Hunter there. I think he gives him a little shot in the arm too. Uh, I'll take IUP. All right. Um, in the RMAC, I picked uh, CSU Pueblo for a couple of reasons. Uh, I thought it was fun. Uh, you know, just the, for the same reason, Wit thinks a lot of these things are fun. Uh, I also thought that Phil V. Hill's doing some interesting things with their program. Uh, that's certainly the case. And they play Mines in Pueblo. Tough place to play in the RMAC. And uh, that is why I chose the Thunderwolves to win the RMAC this year. Well, I was very tempted to do exactly that, Brandon, but I'm sticking with the defending champs, Mines. Um, at the end of last season and through the whole off season, I was a little cool on mines. You know, I kind of mm-hmm. had them towards the back end of my top 10, not closer to top five. And the closer we get to the start of the season, the more I see about everything, everything that they've got coming back. I actually think the coaching change there could actually be a, a positive for them. Mm. And, uh, I, I think mines continues this, um, at least for another year. I think Pueblo is going to close the gap to them a lot, but I'm going to stick with mines. Okay. Uh, Chris. Yeah, I got to go up mines as well. I, I think that they just, you know, another school that finds a way to sort of reload, uh, rather than rebuild and, and, and they've got some pretty big pieces there. So I, I like mines, um, before Pueblo right now. Brandon, I'm really glad how well you thought through all the abbreviations before we did this. So that, mm-hmm. that, that flowed smoothly. He's key. He's keeping me on, uh, him, Colin, on my Colin, toes, Chuck. I don't know what Colin, he's going to do next. <laughs> <laughs> uh tony column mines is that not not to be confused with colon blow is that what we're trying to make sure we avoid here? Um, where do we go there <laughs> everybody's got to be old like me to get that one um i i'm sticking with mines here guys i'm going back into the till i see it uh you know i'm 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 rolling with it but i i I think Chuck coined it very well. I think Pueblo is going to take a, a step forward and close the gap. Um, but I, I also want to say too, that, you know, there are a lot of these conferences that we've kind of whittled down that they're pretty much two team races. It's not, I mean, Mesa is no joke. I mean, there, there, there's some good teams in the RMAC. I mean, it's not like it's a cakewalk for either Pueblo or mines. They're going to have to go out and win some games, sure. but I, I still think mines is the favorite until I see otherwise. All right, Justin. Well, when you when you go at the back end of this thing, you guys pretty much cover everything. So I'm going yes. with the guys, Colorado Mines. Okay. And wit. I think Pueblo is good enough to beat everybody else in the RMAC. And I think that they're hard nosed enough. And I think by that time their offensive weapons will be getting going. Uh I'm gonna take Pueblo and a surprise here uh in this one. Okay. Um, in the South Atlantic Conference, I picked Lenore Ryan, obviously. And honestly, this is just a gut feeling pick by me. I, I, Whenever I do things, I always like to have some kind of metric or really write stuff down. For me, it's just a gut feeling. It, it just feels like they're headed in the right direction. They got enough good players coming back, like impact players. You can have a lot of returners, and it, it be largely meaningless because they're just – average players they've got great players coming back and i just feel like it's time for mike jacob it, it he'll get his system going and i think that they're going to ascend to the top of the south atlantic conference Chuck. Uh, i agree brandon uh, for all the same reasons i think this is you know mind our uh, ryan, lenore ryan has been very good under mike jacobs but they haven't been the elite team that they were the couple of years before that i think this is the year that everything comes together with that system and the talent that's in place um, I think that from a roster standpoint, they're, they're probably quite a bit better than any other team in the league, at least heading into the season. Uh, I think they have a little bit more depth as well. So I, I think that they are the team to beat. Okay. Uh, Chris. Well, I, one team I will not be picking is Wingate. Uh, I think they've lost uh, uh, quite a bit of offense. I think defense, I think they're going to be pretty solid. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, Ryan, great players on D, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that defense is the truth. Um, but I'm going to go with Limestone here. 
I'm going to go a little bit different direction than okay. y'all do. All right, Tony. I am playing the Brandon Meisner gut card here and taking, New taking Newberry. Okay. Justin. So better not I, get I, this I, one wrong. What's that? So better not get <laughs> this one wrong. Oh, careful now. I know. No, I, I think I think you guys make a lot of really, really good points. I think for me, uh, <laughs> I think Lenore Ryan has enough playmakers coming back, and they have a lot of tough games on the road this year. They're at Wingate, they're at Newberry, and they're at Limestone. Um, and so, but I, I think Lenore Ryan is is set up right now if they can stay healthy to to win the conference championship. But don't sleep on Limestone; they're going to be a tough out, Chris. I think you're right on that. But but I I'm I'm going to go with Lenore Ryan in this one. Okay, wit. I really like Winget, and um, I, I was kind of torn here, but I just think Lenore Ryan's got too many stars coming back, Not, you know, as you kind of yeah. alluded to. And uh, I, I think it's kind of their time now. All right. All right, and the, in the SIAC, this was one that I had a lot of difficulty with because I thought it could go a number of different ways. Uh, in my heart, you know, I kind of wanted to go with Tuskegee because I've, I've always liked them. I've seen them play in person. The people were great people, you know, so there's always kind of a love for them. That doesn't factor into any of this, though. And in, in spite of the fact that they lost Phoenix, uh, Fort Valley lost their quarterback as well. Oh, but I just went with Benedict. Um, I thought, you know, they, they had a great season last year, and I think they'll repeat it again this year. I'm uh, going to go. I'm going to go Fort Valley State. Now they did lose their uh, bell cow running back, and that's a a big deal mm -hmm. for them. But uh, <coughs> the rest the rest of the team they have coming back looks pretty solid. I think they've got the uh, the quarterback that's projected to be the the Syx, uh, you know offensive player of the year. Um, really good team. They were kind of on the fringe of the playoffs, as a lot of teams in, in Region Two were a year ago. Uh, that opener against Tuskegee is going to tell us a lot. But um, I'm going right. Fort Valley. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you stole all my thunder here. Um, I, I was going with Fort Valley as well um, here. Okay. Uh, Tony. Tuskegee. Uh, Justin. Benedict. And Wit, you get the last word. That's how it should be. Um, That's scary. You know, I thought Benedict <laughs> was going to be – Ferg, I didn't hear that. It's probably better that way. Um, because he sucked all the air out of the room. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Benedict seems like such an obvious pick here. Uh, but at the same time, I'm, I'm just concerned. I don't think they're going to be as battle-tested. I like Fort Valley. Um, you know, Kelvin Durham, a quarterback, real good, dual-threat guy. Then he's got Corinthians Edmonds, a receiver. I just kind of like some of those guys they are returning. I think it's their time. All right. Very good. Well, there you have it, everybody. Um, we will uh, review this at the end of the year and see how we do. Um, do you guys this, think this, this is easy might have been the longest segment in the history of segments we've done? It wasn't, and we weren't wasting a lot of time either. <laughs> yeah, it was. Feel like You're it. exactly it's right. It's a lot of picks, though. <laughs> yes, it, it is. It is. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, we'll we'll pick that up uh, and look at that at the end of the year. Do you guys think that was harder to pick? The games individually each week, or the conference champion games, games. Okay, that's why. Yeah, that's I what know. I thought too. That's what I thought too. There's there's so many variables with who ends up winning a championship that I don't put. I wasn't putting too much pressure on myself to try to get that right. That's 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 true too, and um, and you're not also you know, it, it's it's a generalist decision versus a specific. You know, uh, it's just. Yeah. I agree. That's that was what I my thought was too. With that, it was easier to pick this than it was to pick uh, to pick games. So yeah. Um, well, uh, that is the end of segment one, and I want to go ahead and uh, uh, again thank Boss Pizza and Chicken for uh, coming uh, online as a sponsor and supporting us uh, this year. Uh, you, we talked a lot about them last year, um, our last uh, last show, and. Uh, Really happy to have them on board and really want to uh, thank them for 
uh, for what they're doing for us. Having said that, a little reluctant to put images of food on the show because I'm a little worried that Matt might be distracted. And uh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. What 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 were we talking about? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but uh, you know, Boss has uh, pizza, oh. chick, chicken. Oh. That that is the well, best. Business is picking up right there. Yeah. yeah. What, what, business what you say? is what? picking up right there. Yeah. Yes. So I need to find um, out what flavor that is because that's yummy. I would eat it without even knowing what flavor it was. Well, that that's. I mean, you know, with all due respect to bosses, uh, I think you would do that with a lot of food. So, uh, one thing to watch out for: we we joke about being fat, which is also the truth. Uh, but Matt and I are going to take the challenge, and we are going to try uh, to eat this pizza. So, what you know, these two dudes. Tell us, tell me about these two dudes. Well, I don't know them, but um, well, I know they, who they are. Yeah, they, yeah, they, uh, they are. They travel all across the country, and they go ahead and they do eating competitions and things of that sort. That doesn't mean that Brandon and I are all of a sudden going to be a road show very similar to that. Although I'm sure you would all find that very entertaining. Um, I thought instead, that was implied. <laughs> <laughs> um, instead, at the end of September when Sioux Falls and Augustana meet for the key to the city game, we're going to stop by and maybe even do like a live uh, thing out from bosses where uh, our fearless leader and myself, we will be trying to take down this 28 inch pizza in less than an hour. I'm sure there'll be all kinds of side bets on it and everything. Um, I have been practicing. I just thought I'd put that out there. Um, so I've been Buying pizza, folding in half. Justin's already shaking his head, like there's some disbelief. Like you, like I wouldn't do that. Uh, so, and I found out that when I fold it in half, I can do work. So, Brandon, we're gonna need for you to practice a little bit more because I'm I've been practicing a few days a week, and I'm getting a, I feel like I'm gonna be in game shape by the time it's uh, the the end of September. Well, I'm in some shape, but it's usually round. So, just yep. a reminder, guys. Uh, Go to the website. They are looking to expand into what I would call the Midwest, but you guys up there would probably call it lower Midwest or whatever. Um, think of the MIAA and the territories down here. They're kind of a uh, an upper Midwest uh, organization. Go to their website, and in the upper uh, right-hand corner, there's a link for franchisees. Uh, put in your information if you're interested in this. Make sure that you tell them that uh, let them know that you heard about them from us. So, uh, again, we uh, really support their uh, their support of us, which helps us do things uh, and bring this show to, uh, amongst other things, to you guys. So, uh, again, wanted to say thank you to uh, Boss's Pizza and Chicken. And, Brandon, All you right. know what? If somebody opens up a franchise, you and I will come try the go, go eat there sometime. That, there you go. Hey, that's that, a hell of an that, idea. That ought, that ought to make you do the purchase just by itself. I think – if they open up a franchise, we'll force Tony and Chuck to go there and try to eat the pizza. Will Will there be a, a meet? Will there be a meet and greet? Can people maybe do photos with you, like a photo op or like a book signing kind of a thing? There, there will be autographs, of course. You know, I just but, want to uh, know if Wit is going to wear the hat that 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 the little logo has. Pull that logo back up. Well, I'll be wearing my bear's hat there. What are you talking about? No, I know you have yeah, that one. I think yeah, you need to get one of those little hats. One of these. <laughs> the little chef hat. Oh, Brandon, Brandon, a lot of, lot of side chatter here from the uh, peanut gallery. <laughs> All right. Well, Wit would like to reassert his dominance. So let's talk about this week's games. Right. Uh, the uh, didn't there are a, a lot of games this year or this week. Brandon, did I win? Didn't I win last year? I have no clue. Do we even it, keep track? It felt like I won. Last year. <laughs> I, 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 my thought was that that simply existed for trash talking. Is the only reason we do the pickums. So, um, let's look at these. Uh, look at these uh, games. Look at the undercard first. Uh, Frostburg is at New Haven. Yeah, it's a really interesting uh, opener with uh, to some teams that got some picks there in our uh, our projections for conference champions. Yeah. Um, remember, that's in region, so definitely something that could be a factor by the time we get to the playoff season with Mountain East and, and Northeast 10 favorites facing off. Also, the first ever home night game for New Haven on the blue turf, so that'll be a pretty cool thing for them. 
All right. Um, Albany State is at Winget. Yeah, there's a lot of intrigue with this game. A um, lot that has to be figured out on offense for Winget. And, uh, you know, Albany is, is, is a little bit of a mystery um, under a new coach. Um, so uh, probably going to go with uh, Wingate, who's been a, a bit of a thorn in the side of many HBCUs in the last couple of years. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Northern State of Bemidji State. Yeah, Northern State returns uh, two top receivers uh, in the Northern Sun, along with a really good defense from a year ago. So it'll, I'm, I'm curious to see if they're going to test Bemidji right out of the gate. Uh, hard not to, to like Bemidji here, but an interesting game to keep an eye on nonetheless. All right. Uh, Angelo State is at West Alabama. Washburn will travel to Pittsburgh State. And Minnesota State is at Sioux Falls. Yeah, that's a game I'm going to be going to uh, since I live in Sioux Falls here naturally. And uh, a lot of storylines here. Defensive coordinator from US, uh, or from Mankato goes to uh, to USF. And uh, first, you know, first game of the year, they, they play each other. Um, certainly in Mankato is Minnesota State's the favorite, uh, but I, uh, you know, I would, I wouldn't count out Sioux Falls in this. Okay. Uh, Limestone, we mentioned them traveling to West Georgia, who was also mentioned. Yeah, it's the big game uh, between the SAC and the, and the Gulf South. I think Limestone, you know, got some questions at quarterback, but they return a lot. West Georgia at home, obviously a little disgruntled with how things went last year. So I think this is a this is a exciting game, particularly for week one on Thursday night. So I'm looking forward to watching this one. Uh, what we got? I, do think, I don't know if this is going to have playoff implication, guys, but I think this could be a preview for the playoffs down the road. Well, sure. it would have last year for sure. Yeah. Um East Central is going to play at Henderson State. That will be interesting. Winona State, an extremely interesting game versus Saginaw Valley. Matt Witwicky, welcome to non-conference games. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, You know, we also got in the Northern Sun, Northern Michigan traveling to Duluth. But uh, in in looking at this one here, week one, um, I really – I like – Winona State's defense, I think they're going to travel well. Uh, I need to see that they're going to have enough offense to win this game. I think Saginaw, St- uh, Saginaw Valley is still a favorite on the road, but very interesting game. Okay. Well, else we got Ashland and IUP. Wow, we've talked a lot about both the last two yeah. weeks. Ashland uh, starting this season exactly where they ended last year. Remember, they met in the playoffs, and uh, IUP kind of got away. And that one didn't really play their best ball. Ashland really had a chance to win that game. I think IEP comes into this season quite a bit further ahead of Ashland just because of, you know, some turnover and some changes uh, in the Ashland program. So I think IUP is a, a pretty heavy favorite this one, but I think it's the first of a four year deal. So these teams are going to get really familiar with each other. All right. Uh, Nebraska Kearney is at UCO. Hillsdale will play at Indianapolis and Midwestern State. Going to face CSU Pueblo. Yeah, you know Midwestern is certainly a, an opponent that has a lot to a lot of question marks, right? But at the same time, they tend to be very well prepared and and well coached. So this is going to be really a really interesting game um, because and you got you know Chance Fuller, Adrian Soto, and and, and Reggie Ratslaff over at Pueblo that's got um, some new faces as well. So this has got a lot of intrigue to it. Okay. Uh, Kutztown, is that assumption? Yeah, these two teams have a lot of history with each other. This has almost become like a pseudo-conference game. I, I believe it's the eighth year in a row that they've opened the season against each other. Uh, Kutztown won the first three in that series. Assumption won the next three. It's been a little bit back and forth. And the last two in this series have both been shutouts, uh, including last year's really bizarre 3 to nothing win for Assumption. So I have no idea what we're in for this year, but it should be pretty interesting. Right, and uh, undercard is rounded out with Westchester at Bentley. Brandon, this is one that I find kind of interesting. I almost, almost took Westchester to be a big upset winner in the from a, at the conference standpoint hmm. in the PSAC. They bring back a whole lot on that football team. Um, probably a pretty even in game here, but if Westchester is on the rise this year, you heard it here first. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe you read it in my column. No, I, I Chuck, Ooh. I don't, Chuck, I didn't read your column. Did Did you remember to include Westchester, Chuck? All right. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in there. 
<laughs> Inside jokes, folks. All right, let's uh, let's move on to the pick'em and uh, look at what games we have. Southeastern Oklahoma, uh, Southern Arkansas. That's on a Thursday. Uh, Grand Valley, Colorado Mines. That's Thursday as well. That's probably the marquee game of the weekend. Uh, Truman State is at Finley on Saturday. West Texas at Western Colorado on Saturday, and Fort Valley is at Tuskegee on Sunday. And again, uh, the pick'em. We don't. The, the main reason the games are selected in the pick'em are twofold. They have to be interesting, and we have to think, or I have to think, that there's going to be a 50-50 split in the vote. It's no fun to pick games where you think one team is going to win. So let's start out with um, Southeastern Oklahoma at Southern Arkansas, and I'm going to start and take them in order that I see them on the screen. So, Tony, you're going to go first. Yeah, so Southeast is coming off a pretty decent season last year. Um, and for as much as the Mule Riders is one of my favorite uh, mascots in all of Division Two, I just see them going in the wrong direction based on where they've gone the last couple of years. So I'll, I think uh, Southeast Oklahoma gets their uh, conference season off on a good start. Okay. All right, and wit. I like some of the firepower that Southern Arkansas returns offensively. I'm taking them in this game. Okay. I would have – this is, to me, clearly 50-50. I'm going to go with Southeastern in this one, though. Uh, who we got next? Chuck. Uh, two of the best running backs in the country in this game. Um, yeah. And I am going to go with Southern Arkansas. I think that the, uh, I think the mule riders have a really good looking team. And I think that they are going to potentially be a big, uh, big surprise in the GAC this year. All right. Uh, Ferg, what you got? Southeastern. All right. Good job, Ferg. Uh, Justin. Southern Arkansas. Ah, uh, boo. All right. Let's look at Grand Valley at Colorado Mines. You know what? Let's let's do that one. Even though it's Thursday, let's do that one last. Uh, Truman State at Finley. Wit, you go first. Well, for the same reason I think Truman State makes the playoffs, uh, I also liking that like them winning week one uh, with Finley. All right. I am going to pick them to win as well. The Bulldogs will win. Uh, Chuck. Well, I like Finley to win the great Midwest, but in this matchup uh, this early in the season, I like Truman yep. State. Okay. Uh, Chris. Truman. Uh, uh-oh. Justin. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to go Finley. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I consider it a personal family if everybody picks the same team. Uh, Tony, what you got, buddy? Man, that's like that's like sitting at the blackjack table with a twelve against a two, and you're like, man, somebody better take a damn card, right? So, yeah. No, you so, hit, but you I'll, I'll roll. I'll roll with two. Coach Poe. I'll take. I'll take the Oilers as well. I'll go former Gleyak. All right. Very good. Uh, all right. West Texas at Western Colorado. That game is Saturday. I am going to go with West Texas. I'm really excited to see what Josh Lynn will do there. So I'm going to go with the buffs. Chuck. Um, I have a lot of questions about both teams. Um, I so really like the fun. future. Yeah, I really like the future at West Texas, but I think that they're pretty young this year. Um, I'm going to go with Western Colorado. Okay. K Ferg. WT. All right. Uh, Justin, West Texas. That's what I'm talking about. All right, Tony. <laughs> you notice that he's been giving accolades to people who just pat him on the fanny and take the same yes. thing he did. What kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> okay, so no fanny patting for me. I'll take Western Colorado. You, that's your loss, buddy. All right, no, uh, wit. So be it. I feel like Western Colorado's <laughs> probably more the smart pick. So I'm going to take West Texas, and uh, I, I, you know, I take a look at the fact that um, <laughs> I, I, I think it's going to be harder for people to figure out exactly what West Texas is right away. Um, I don't think they're going to be exactly the same offensively as they were at Carney, TJ Davis in there, and stuff like that. So I feel like they they have a little advantage in this game. I'll take West Texas. All right. 
So let's uh, look at um, the next game is going to be Fort Valley at Tuskegee. We'll be watching it as we prepare for the show. What a great, uh, great game to open up the season for both teams. Yeah. Uh, Chuck. Well, I went in with Fort Valley to uh, to win the SIAC this year, so I need him to take this game for me. So okay. I'm going Fort Valley. All right, Ferg. Fort Valley, all right. Fort Valley, yeah. Yeah, okay. You already knew. All right, Justin. Fort Valley. Okay. I will go with them as well. Um, Wit. Well, certainly, so there's a little bit of you know bleed over from the the conference picks as to where right. we go on this one. Uh, right. I like Fort Valley in this one, but I think it's a real good game, and I'm interested to watch it on Sunday. All right, maybe we'll start the show early and just live stream it and talk over it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, Tony, what you got? Well, I could I could subscribe or or try and emulate the uh, Matt Witwicky D two football cavalcade and and. <laughs> <laughs> and and then predict Tuskegee will run the table from there to win the conference. But uh, no, I'll give me the, give me the Golden Tigers to get the season off on the right foot. All right, awesome. Uh, All right, now let's go ahead and <laughs> pick the last game, which will be on Thursday. Grand Valley is at Colorado Mines. We're going to start with Ferg. Ooh, wow, what a doozy! Uh, Grand Valley is returning the trip this year. Um, well, mines looks good in a lot of ways, but Grand Valley and, and really that league is just on a different level. Um, I, I think Grand Valley is, is going to win this game. Okay. Justin. Yeah. I, I really don't know, but I would say Grand Valley for everything you just said, Ferg. I mean, they're just not that, that conference is on a different level. All right. Wit. First off, who do you guys think Massey has favored in this game? They <laughs> <laughs> uh, it over an hour. Massey I didn't realize probably, that was, that was like Massey a punch probably has Fort Hayes winning this game. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Well, which team played Northwest last year? Grand Valley. So Grand Valley's favorite, of course, because by the you know the properties thing. Um, Did you guys know the Northwest is ranked number one according to Massey preseason? Just throw that little nugget out there. To, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Get a fire burner. In, in um, other news, water's wet. Pitt State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I want to take mines in this game. I really do, but I just have too much faith in the defense of Grand Valley. Okay. Um. And this is a tough one uh, for me as well, two first-time head coaches. That's interesting. How often do you get two programs this good with first-year head coaches True. to open a season? That's that's insane. Um, I'm going to go with the Lakers, though. Okay. Chuck. All right. I guess I'll go. I'll be the one to go against the grain here a little bit. And I, I showed my love for Grand Valley. I picked them to, uh, to win the GLIAC, and I think that they will. But – I think going into Golden, Colorado to beat Mines on Thursday night with the team that they have in place, the Harlan Hill winner and John Matoka, I'm going with the Ore Diggers. Okay. And, Tony, you get the last word. <sighs> well, um, I think Mines has a lot more guys back than maybe we all thought they could have back. Um, and there's a lot of that you know, COVID stuff that seems to still be um, impacting things, but Zeman didn't come back, and I don't believe Armanderas did either. And those are two really no. key guys on their offense uh, that they're going to be without, and they had a major impact on helping John Motoka do the things that he did. Um, and Grand Valley's defense, uh, you know, the scuttlebutt is it may be better than it was last year. I guess we'll see mm. that on the field, um, but. Uh, uh, I'm going to go with Grand Valley, but yeah, doing that on the road at altitude, all those other fun things, it's, it's not going to be easy. Um, I don't know. At the same time, man, being at that game last year, I don't, I don't feel like Grand Valley played their best game. And I wonder if, if, you know, they're going to go out and try and do that for their new coach. I, I guess we'll find out, but uh, yeah, I'll take the Lakers, even though it's a, 
uh, right. kind of falling in line with everybody else or most everybody else. All right, there you go. Well, we'll, we'll uh, ridicule each other about this next week when we find out who uh, uh, who won and who lost. Uh, we, next subject or next topic, will be the favorite of the message board over the last 20 years, 25 years, however long it's been now. What is the best conference in Division Two? We will rank them one through five or five to one when we come back. Just wanted to take this opportunity to thank those who have supported D2 Football this year. D2 Football is free, but it isn't cheap. Your support helps offset our expenses and allows us to expand our coverage. If you like what we're doing, please consider supporting us. Visit d2football.com support. Or if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, click contact on the website to find our mailing address. But again, thank you for supporting D2 Football. All right. Well, welcome back to the time in which everybody either tunes out or a thousand people come in. I don't know what it's going to be, but uh, we're going to discuss uh, the, the topic that comes up every stinking year. And, and Tony, you're you're an old old vet of D two football. You know that this subject is is a conversation every year, where Absolutely. some clown will think five teams in his conference are top five, and and uh, everybody else in the world stinks. So. Uh, before we get this started, and we really haven't like done any discussion or prep or anything for this, we knew, I thought it was it was important that we kind of figured out and talked about how you measure individually how strong a conference is. Um, let's take this in. Uh, we'll start with wit and go in uh, clockwise. As I see it, Wit, go ahead and start, please. How, how do you measure? What are your criteria for to measure a conference versus the others? I, I think it's very challenging because I think there's a there few the th- things that immediately come to mind for me are how how do you, since we have such you know a small sample size of out of conference games with the top teams playing each other, okay. um, certainly we have to take each one of those games as a pretty precious thing. You know, when we see those contests, especially with the top squads. Now, does that mean that your conference strength is only defined by how your best team is in your conference? That doesn't seem probably right either. So I think it also comes down to the other side, which is let's say we took your conference and went one through eight or whatever you have. And how would you fare one through eight against the next conference right next door? So I think it's a combination of those two. That's kind of what I see myself. Um, Tony, what, like, uh, you know, I'm referring to you because you're pretty kind of, kind of veteran guy here, been around you too longer than I have. What, what are your thoughts uh, as to a, a way to figure this out? <laughs> well, <laughs> There is, I mean, obviously there's no axiomatic way to do it. Um, if there were, you know, the, the playoff teams that get selected every year would be, would be, you know, far more accurate than maybe we all seem to think that they are. And we'd argue less about it and what have you. Um, certainly out of conference is, is, is part of what you would use or at least some sort of a frame of reference. But I think, you've got it nailed that that the, the, the sample size is so small and that's due in part to the fact that uh, everything's so regionalized, right? I mean, let's face right. it last year at the end of the year, I don't think there was a whole lot of argument that Grand Valley, Ferris, Pitt state and Northwest were all what top seven, top eight, one could sure. argue top five and they're all in the same region. So you don't even see in the playoffs when the elite teams are getting deeper into the field, they don't play each other really until the final four. And it's really hard to gauge. Well, what happens at that point? Now, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people on the message board want to argue to the to kingdom come about how um, one region's better than the other and one's not. But I mean, you got to look at the, the kind of the elephant in the room in that piece of the deal is that, okay, super region one, Hasn't ever. I don't think they've ever won a title, have they? At least not since Grand Valley was in it. Um, so, 
but I mean, is that sample size really legitimate? I mean, they're only getting one shot at a team or two shots at a team every year. And now you're basically painting a brush with that includes, you know, multiple conferences. I, I don't know if those guys are any good or not. And I don't know. There's part of me that, that wants to argue it a bunch of different ways and, and doesn't care. And then another, another part of me, it's like, I got to vote in the poll. So I got to use whatever biases that I have. Um, and I don't know. I mean, at least in the last couple of years, it certainly seems like teams from the uh, MIAA and the GLIAC and maybe the, the Gulf South and a little lesser extent, the Lone Star seem to have the physicality. You know, can't, you can't forget the RMAC. I mean, those tend to be the ones that have risen further up. But I, again, that's more my own eye test than anything. And that, I guess, ultimately, with that's really what I try to use. I try to use as much eye test as I can. But that's completely subjective. That's my opinion. And I think ultimately that's what it comes down to is, you know, everybody's going to have their own opinion. And do you get a consensus where, like, at least the guys in this panel, for example, do we all tend to agree that our opinions kind of start to align? Or, you know, how do you, how do you resolve something like that? Ferg, Ferg, what are your thoughts, buddy? Well, <laughs> when you look at a conference as a whole, you have to look at all the teams in the conference. Mm -hmm. Great point. And I think that it's really important to not look necessarily at the top of the conference, but the middle. Because I think the middle of the conference sort of represents how strong your conference is as a whole. So when you look at, you know, some of these conferences that are very top heavy, how, okay, you kind of see how they may shape up against the rest of the league, but it's really the middle because the middle is the one that really determines that strength of schedule, in my opinion. Can the middle of the conference win out of conference? Can they win, you know, and, and give some of those teams at the top of the conference a run for their money? And, you know, maybe it's a one score, two score kind of game. Um, to me, I think I think it's the middle of the conference that would determine the strength of the conference to me. Hmm. Justin, what are your thoughts? I agree with a lot of what Ferg said, except I think at that bottom level of the conference, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, you have your top teams and, and it's a kind of what you said, Ferg, you know, is it that middle, but how tough is the bottom of your conference, right? Like, are they getting you, are they a tough out? And if the answer is yes, if, you know, if, if anybody could win in any given week, then, then that's a pretty dang good conference. And typically, like you said, you got your one or two teams, maybe three teams that are the top echelon teams, but then you might have four through eight, four through 10, that might be, the, how close are they and how tough are they? Um, because I, I think typically when you start looking at it, you talk about the trend of schedule and, 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 and are they a tough out week to week? You know, if you start have teams that are beating each other up and if, if the bottom level of that conference is pretty strong and the, and the middle to bottom of that conference is, is competitive and they're a tough place to play and they're, you know, they're tough on the schedule. They, they do, maybe they don't win against the one and two in that conference, but they're beating the two or the three or the four in another conference. I think I think that's to me where you're what you're looking at because everybody's got those one or two teams that are really good, right? But it's really where does that two through whatever where where, do, where does that stack up? And I think that's to me that's a metric of of a good conference. And when you start looking at like when I coached in in the conferences, you start looking at like where where do you fit? And but you start looking at those those games, right? Like those those games that you don't really pay attention to that don't make it on the show. What what are you doing in those games, and how are those how tough are those games? I, I think is a is a pretty big metric for me on on a conference. So, do you guys feel like um, if we're going to try and cap, if think about okay, how much what, what kind of time frame are we thinking about for maybe data or comparative results? Do you guys think within the last five to ten years is probably about reasonable, given the fact that there's changes that occur over the maybe ten years? Is that fair? I. I think that's important to to do that because I or to to set that criteria or at least in your thinking uh, because I was going to make fun of uh, Matt because he said uh, he's pulling out Wayne State's appearance in the Northern Michigan National Championship. Wayne State uh, should have happened. Division two yeah, is long. fifty years old, which means it's the same age as me. Which means if you or your program's national championship was when I was born, it's not very relevant today. And uh, I, I do agree, Matt, that like it, I, I always viewed the strength of a program in both a five year and a 10 year window. 
I thought a five year window because that's when uh four or five year window because that's when uh, kids are are paying attention a little bit. They get to high school, they're looking at uh recruiting, maybe moving on to the next level. Although, you know, we all know that kids are paying attention to Bama, not Bentley. You know, so uh, that there could be, uh, uh, you know, a li- little inaccurate. That could be a, a wrong way to look at it. But I think that it is true that there needs to be some kind of time frame in your thought process. Otherwise, we don't want to talk about, you know, any school's championships as an influence. You know, I, I talk about it all the time with about the, the the residue of history and how I still have to guard – Right today, thinking about programs who were great when I first started the website versus today, and that's hard to do. So I think you know when you do that, you have to be you have to be aware of that that potential bias and try to not let that influence your decision. Because if if we're going to talk about history, it's going to be the Northern Sun. I'm excuse me, NCC or the Gulf yeah. South. That's yeah. going to be the argument, and everybody else can just you know, leave the room. Uh, that's not the argument today though. Well, and on top of that too, Brian, I mean, let's, uh, you got to keep in mind that stuff changes, right? So yeah, if we're talking about things from 50 years ago, things have changed since then. I mean, yeah. even 25 years ago, I mean, Hey, one of the paths that the GLIAC had to getting to where they are now was the peace act because there was a stretch of time in the eighties and nineties where GLIAC teams would get to the playoffs and they couldn't beat PSAC teams. They just couldn't do it. And over right. the last handful of years, you don't right. know and how there competitive was that is because I think Wayne State and Saginaw might be the only two teams I can think of that have actually played PSAC teams in the Ashland a little bit. But, I mean, back when they were still in the GLIAC. But, I mean, in those games, you know, they've GLIAC has fared better, but you haven't seen the top face the top in a playoff type format to really know other than I think maybe Grand Valley and Shepard. And I don't even know if Shepard's still in the MEC at that point. Um, or the you know, Wibiac. I mean, yeah. Or the Wibiac. Yeah. Excuse me. So, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, so, I mean, is, is you don't know if it's different, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, stuff has changed, you know, the level of ball at the playoff level in the GLIAC has, has changed. Don't know if how, how it measures up against the, the Pennsylvania league. I, I mean, I think a lot of folks, might have opinions about it, but we can't we can't verify it. Well, Ferg, and- Ferg, let me let me ask you if I could, if we were going to kind of start off and look at okay, who is who is your five, and what order would you have them in? So I had to write these down, and okay. uh, I, I thought that there was just a lot. Number five, I think, is the hardest one, hmm. um, and, and I would say that probably number five. Probably will be the Lone Star, but you know I debated between the Lone Star, the PSAC, the South Atlantic, um, and the RMAC there. Um, so that, that's kind of a tough one. Um, number four, the NSIC. Uh, number three, the Gulf South. Uh, number two, the 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 GLIAC, and the AMIAA will be number one. So who you who do you have as four and five for? The Northern Sun is four. Okay. And the Lone Star is five. Okay. Now, now, Justin, how would you see it, buddy? <sighs> One and two is difficult to me because I think it's it's. The G, the, the GLIAC or, or the MIAA. I, I mean, it's it's just kind of it's a coin toss to me up there, and and that like Ferg, you were saying the five. I th- I think it's the one and the two uh, that I think is is pretty difficult. Um, I th- I think number three, I think would be the Northern Sun. Four would be the Gulf and five Lone Star or the the RMAC, probably. Did you pick between the MIAA and the GLIAC? Crap, no, I didn't. Uh, I was just going to say, did I miss something? (laughs) (laughs) Um, You must choose your destiny. (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I, I'm going to take the, uh, gosh, the Gliac. Okay. Interesting. Who do you want to go next, Whit? Uh, Tony, you go next. So, to me, yeah, I mean, it's a coin flip, MIAA and GLIAC. And I, I think I'll put the MIAA one for the exact thing that I wish I had said earlier that Kay Ferg said, which is, um, you know, if I look at the middle teams, like if, if I see Central Missouri or Missouri West Tech, I don't, I don't know if I'm picking Tech. And, 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 you know, Tech is, is always got really good teams. They execute, they play well, they can play physical. Um, but I don't know if they're going to beat Missouri Western. Same thing with a Wayne State. Wayne State's always super physical. Um, ask any team in the league what kind of guys they have and, and the physicality of those teams. But can they hang with a, a middle of the road MIAA team? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I think three is Gulf South for me. And then I struggle at four or five and maybe even down to six, the same way I do at one, two, where I think the Northern Sun, the RMAC, the Lone Star, and the PSAC all start to kind of, you know, you could you could make cases, you know, uh, mm -hmm. one way or another for, for any of them. Okay. So pick an order. You're going to make me? Okay, so yeah. MIAA, GLIAC, <laughs> Gulf South. Um mm -hmm. I, it's four or five where like yeah, who, who I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Lone Star R Mac, but I uh, okay. uh, uh, it's right. It's uh, no, the, it's so close there. It is yeah. absolutely close. There's like a group of close and then another group of close. Yeah. You know. Well, and that proves and I think that goes to what I was saying earlier though, too, because like I think I think ten years ago the Northern Sun would have been higher on that list for all of us. Well, with Duluth and Mankato merging, right? Uh, yeah, for sure. All right, uh, Wit, do you want to go last, or do you want me to go last? I'll, I'll have last word. It always seems to work out best that way. Okay, you you always have the answers for the test. <laughs> there. Um, you know, whenever this argument or this discussion has happened over a number of years, the way I have always looked at it is this: it. it Wit has often talked about, you know, one versus one, two versus two, so on and so forth. Who would win? That obviously can't work out because some conferences have 16, some have eight, some have 10, whatever. It doesn't matter. But my thought process has always been if you took the top eight, because most teams have, or most conferences have eight, and you put everybody's going to play 10 games. So there, there might be some wins that are accomplished out of conference. But if you took the top eight in a conference and played, you know, they played each other, then that is uh, a one way, a way I've kind of always measured it. So, uh, honestly, my list came out exactly the way Ferg's did. I had the MIAA, the GLIAC, the Gulf South, the Northern Sun, and then the Lone Star. Okay. The reason I came to that conclusion is that if you look at the top eight in the MIAA versus the GLIAC, and that was the tough, that was the tough choice there because I have ultimate respect for the style, everything that the GLIAC does. Uh, my thought was one game, one GLIAC wins game two GLIAC wins. But then when like, kind of like Tony said, once we get to the third game, does it flip? And like right now, I kind of feel like it does. Tony, would you say Saginaw or Davenport was the third best team in the GLIAC last year? For me, it was Saginaw Valley. Okay. Even though the, even though the, the standings didn't bear that out. Okay. So I, I would, if you're talking about Emporia versus Saginaw, I consider that a toss up. But if it was Emporia versus Davenport, I would pick Emporia. Yeah. And so. Uh, but even then that would be like maybe a five to three. So that was, that was my, my rationale in determining or, or, or picking the MIAA the best right now um, is that the, the GLIAC would, would win the first two, but the MIAA would likely win uh, the next five in, in my imaginary scenario. Um, thought clearly the, the Gulf South was the next. Having said that it would not, the GLIAC MIAA and Gulf South are always, 
three of the conferences that are in the discussion for the best. Yeah. And it would take nothing for that to flip to the Gulf South where it's better than both leagues in one year because yeah. they could – you know, bring in the right coach and the right players, and all of a sudden, you know, they're kicking they're kicking butt all over the place, and nobody can stop them. And and that that would not surprise me either. But I th- feel like right now uh, they were third. Uh, I put the Northern Sun over the Lone Star. Uh, I think uh, there's too much. The NSIC has more depth right now, and that was the way I came to those conclusions. I uh, I went back and forth on, and I think for me there it's a it's a pretty clear top three. And, and for everybody who wasn't aware, why are we having this conversation? If you watch the media days for the a lot of the main conferences across the landscape, we were hearing a lot of, and we have been for years. Well, we mm-hmm. play in the top conference in Division Two. Well, that's kind of what made us feel like we need to have this conversation right now. So when I look at this, I land with an MIAA number one by the smallest of margins. My cons- each one of the each one of the conferences has a little bit of a hole, and that is that Northwest has kind of carried the flag for for the MIAA in this last ten years. Um, there really hasn't been a team who's had a great deal of postseason success that wasn't them in this last ten years. So that's that's a bit of a concern right there. Mm-hmm. However, they have, in my opinion, more depth across the board. And I think that's what Brandon was getting at a moment ago. Um, the next one I have is the golf South. Now those may, and I know the GLIAC fo- folks are getting ready to throw rocks at me. Here's why I'm saying this. If we're looking at a 10 year window, Valdosta's won what twice. Yeah. Um, West Florida's won a title. We're talking about Delta state this year. We've talked about West Georgia before. There's a lot of teams that are, are ones that are front runners, not just, another team in there and so that's kind of why i and not to mention una you know they played in a national title game as recent as what 16 so for me una or where i was almost at the point where i was going to move the golf south up to number one but i think that with una gone and valdosta needing to reassert themselves and not be in there just yet i think that dropped them down just enough for me to have them at two then I think, you know, my fear with the GLIAC is, you know, if you take a look, um, you know, Ferris State's won a few titles here in the last few years. Grand Valley hasn't won, you know, in the recent window. Um, and if I take a further look, I'm just not seeing – I, I not enough of those teams in that league have been competing with those two top teams. And that's what kind of moves me down from them having up – being up higher. Because if you take a look at the slate – it's just a lot. It's a lot of blowouts, and I'm not saying that no one can compete with them in the conference, but you see a whole lot more of that in the MIAA, which is really why I have the MIAA one. Uh, I have uh, the Northern Sun fourth. Um, you know, the the rest of the conference in the Northern Sun, not named Mankato, has not had the best results in the playoffs. Um, however, they do have a fair amount of depth to this conference. Ch- uh- let me interrupt on that though, too. Yeah. You're right about that. The problem again is something that a lot of other conferences talk about. For instance, the GAC would be one. Well, how you know, our we're always playing Northwest <clears throat> or we're always playing Grand Valley, we're always playing Ferris. That that is that is certainly true. The depth of the Northern Sun is playing the best teams in the first round from the other conferences. Sure. You know, so so it's not like a true one versus one matchup. That's more of a one versus three matchup or one versus two. The way they're an underdog in most of those games. Forward. You're right. Yeah, they're an underdog in most of those contests. Yeah. Um, now, Mankato has been a very good squad over this last 10 years, very consistent. Um, so obviously, I think they help propel um, the Northern Sun up to that spot because, you know, I take a look at some Northern Sun against some of the other conferences and they haven't fared awesome. But then when Mankato's in there, they do. So that can't be, you can't be overlooked. Now, then when you come to five, I think five is pretty challenging. I have the RMAC at five because I look at Pueblo and Mines in kind of different little periods within the last 10 years who have been very tough. And with, and I have them just over the Lone Star and the GAC. Uh, The GAC, I think, has had, other than Harding, 
just hasn't shown the greatest in, in that, you know, in the window uh, that we're talking about. But then if I take a look, for example, at the Lone Star, if we were doing this five years ago, I'd have the Lone Star in the mix higher because you have Commerce oh, yes. and you have Tarleton. Yep. Those are two pretty substantial losses, and we've kind of elaborated over the last year or so that there is not a number two jumping up to challenge Angelo at the moment. So right, well, that, and, that and has, has the RMAC five. You know, the, the, the West Texas, a number still in 13 would have been a, considered a good opponent too. You sure. know, so the, 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 the problem, the, one of the biggest problems with the depth of the, uh, the Lone Star is not just the fact that Commerce reclassified and Tarleton reclassified. The problem right. is that West Texas is not what they should be. Right. And that would change perception and reality a lot if they become the program. I mean, that, that's a top 10 program waiting to happen. It's the right person just has to make it happen. Sure. I just want to throw out that, like, when you look at the RMAC and Lone Star, though, that they do play each other quite a bit in non-conference. And when you look at the, the outcomes, a lot of times it's the Lone Star coming on top. And it's not just the top of the conference either, though. That's the only well, this thing. Well, last year, mines went down and, and 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 whooped Angelo down there. Right. And then you also had Pueblo smack around Midwestern State. So, I mean, that that is kind of changing a little for when we talk yep. about the better teams. And, and the other thing I just kind of point out that the, the one thing I did notice is, like, at least somebody from the conference has made the national championship game that mm -hmm. in, the, in those top fives. I mean, yep. that, that seems to be a barometer that mm. separates some of those conferences from the, you know, the six, sevens, and eights. Agreed. Sure. Agreed. Well, what, what other, I mean, the PSAC would have a representative in the championship game. Not within the, are we just talking the window, though? Yeah, the, the window. Year window. And the 10-year okay. window. Yeah. Um, it does get a little hard because you're going back in time. Quite, you know, quite a few years to try to, to find representatives for some of these schools. So, yeah, very good. I mean, the RMAC obviously has done really well. So, Inter interesting topic. Um, uh, and it not nearly as heated as I thought it was going to be. So, <laughs> I, I thought we were going to get some heat, but uh, it, it, it was not. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, every week I remind you to like this video, subscribe to the channel, appreciate all the interaction with the comments. Uh, apparently it helps the algorithm not that we really care that much about it uh, <laughs> but nonetheless totally anything helps um follow us on, on social media facebook at d2 football on uh, twitter d2 football instagram d2 football i'll get that thing going a lot better uh during the week your columnists break down teams and races in their conference shane new Sack columnist, not sack podcaster, but new sack columnist Shane in the comments. We appreciate you watching tonight. Uh, look for, I haven't read your column yet, but look forward to reading it. Uh, we provide perspective and that many fans don't get from their SIDs releases. So on game days, coming up Thursday is going to be a game day. Uh, you can access our scoreboard and sort scores by top 25 conference, et cetera, et cetera. I think right now it's fun to sort by top 25. Uh, later on, the super region becomes very important uh, when when it's near to playoff selection time. Uh, the message board, haven't checked it for a while, so if you're trying to get on there, totally apologize. I'll try to check it tonight and uh, and uh, a preview. Uh, try to keep spam out of there, and it's a, it's a lot of work to keep spam out of there. Sometimes it's literally a 500 to 1 ratio of spam to a legitimate uh, – um, a legitimate uh, poster. So, uh, but check out the message board. It's a neat place to be. Um, let's, oh my goodness, Ryan, I'm so sorry. So, all right, long story short, back when I was in school, there was a punter at my school named Shane Gladwin, and I called Ryan Gladwin, our call him the Shane Gladwin. We had a big discussion about it. I said, I know I'm going to do this at some point. All it took was <laughs> one mention, and it happened. So, hey, sorry, brother. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at some comments and questions. Um, get them in because we're going to, we're not going to take forever to do them. So if you have a question, make it fast. Uh, let's show this one first. Good, great news. Barris have released PJ Walker. So all indications are that Tyson Bajant will be uh, the backup quarterback in Chicago. 
Whether he's a backup or not, Wit, you're a Bears fan. It looks like he's going to be on the roster, right? Yeah, there was some speculation about this because P.J. Walker was couldn't get out of his own way in the preseason, despite the fact that they gave him a little bit of money and he had been a, a good player uh, in spot duty, you know, in, in the NFL and the XFL. Um, so I was a little bit surprised by that because he is a, he's more an athletic player um, and a little bit more of a, a better true backup for what they do with Justin Fields with a lot of running. But Bajan has shown well. And you know what? Uh, I'm real happy to see this. Uh, we haven't had very many quarterbacks uh, from Division Two in the NFL uh, in, in quite some time. So this says a lot about him, I think. Chuck and I were talking in the pre-show, and like in the last 20 years, the ones that stood out to us were Chris Grison from Northwest, J.T. O'Sullivan from UC Davis, um, and then Dustin, I think it was Dustin Vaughn from West Texas. Now, lots yeah. of guys had chances. You know, Cullen Finnerty had a chance. Lots of others had chances. But we're talking about actually ma- making the roster. Can anybody else think of any D2 quarterbacks that made a roster? Luis Perez is still hanging around either the XFL or the USFL. <laughs> he he is. Right. And, and um, Chuck had mentioned that, but it's not the NFL. He never made one there. Oh, that's true. And I think Mike Riley had a couple of stints before he really ended up sticking in the CFL. And he was a star in the CFL. So. Chuck, yeah, I believe he's still playing. I, th- I think he might have just retired. I could, could be wrong be. on that, but yeah. Could be. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me check the live. Keith <laughs> Noll. Keith Noll started a game. Oh, Great job, Paul. Kyle. Yep. yep. So, um, all right. Um, let's go ahead and look at the next one. Let me take that one off. Um, uh, just so you know, I'm passive aggressive, Kyle. You <laughs> said let's get this party started, and it was like 45 seconds early. So I waited 30 seconds late to get it started. That's on you. Everybody can blame you. All That's right. That's a random thing to do. It is. <laughs> um, What's that? To be spiteful or to blame Kyle for something? Yes. Uh, maybe cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, talking about th- – this is a side conversation. Talking about Golker or Malik Mitchell. Neither are great passers. Gulker's a better runner. Neither one of them has to be a great passer because schematically they get so wide open that anybody can hit the pass. You agree, right, Tony? Definitely. Okay. Um, it's funny not here's universal, Kyle. but it's it, that's the scheme yeah. gives them a lot of advantages, and you're you're not doing as many tight window throws in Ferris's system as you would be right. another. Right. Uh, Shepard going to be very upset about the selection. Great group at Shepard. They can take uh, the criticism and do with it what with, with do with it what they want. No disrespect, but I think uh, does anybody disagree that they just lost way too much? I mean, yeah, they had five guys who were sniffing NFL yeah. on one offense in Division Two. That's insane. Totally. All right. All right. Uh, does Boss Pizza have a delivery window out to Michigan? You know, I bet you could get it delivered. I doubt it would still be warm when it got there. But remember, Kyle, uh, man, it's just uh, everything's Kyle. Uh, If you want to be an entrepreneur, let us know, and we'll let them know. A boss in western Michigan would would give my buddy Jeremy a reason to go through the Chicagoland area and, you know, make that Mm -hmm. a normal thing. I think he'd be okay with that. All right. Here is – an interesting question from Ryan, not Shane Gladwin. Uh, here's the question outside of the top two teams in the top three leagues, who is the biggest threat to win a national title? So take mm. away the Gulf South in my double A and uh, Gliak. Would it have to be mines? I think Mankato would be on the outside of that conversation. There you go. I would agree with Mankato, I would agree with mines. Um, I, I'm we're all talking the, about Angelo like they're falling off, but I mean, you know, yeah, if, Ange- portal, if Angelo were to win, I feel like the cupboard's not going to be bare at Angelo, right? If, I mean, if they were to, you know, win all their regular season, you know, Super Region Four could very well have to go through them. So sure. it's fair point. And then <laughs> you know, and then Justin's point earlier too, you know, West Georgia. An angry West Georgia could be interesting. Hmm. All right. Very good. Uh, and finally, the last one. 
Why did the Battle of the Bulge just show up on a suggested movies for me just now? This was during our food conversation. I thought that was pretty hilarious by Joe. So, all right. Um, and that that's it. Uh, that's going to be the last question that we answered tonight. Uh, so uh, in any case, I uh, appreciate uh, you all joining us. Before we leave, does anybody have a parting shot, either to the audience or to me? I can, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. All right, great. Uh, should be a fun week. It should Absolutely. it should be great. Uh, again, remember next week we'll uh, review uh, the games that are actually played, and that will be uh, fantastic. And Absolutely. I'm always well. excited for the start. It's this by far my favorite part of the year um, is the start of the college football season. So uh, for for Matt, Chris, Justin, and Tony, I am Brandon. So long. Thank you for watching. <laughs>